All right, folks, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, good morning. It is July 14th, 2023. It is 11.03 a.m. and this is Coffee with Community Services, which is Alta California Regional Center's weekly service provider meeting. We are going to do some introductions of staff and then uh, we will jump into our agenda. All right, so first, let's see, I see uh, our HCBS specialist, Alicia is on. Good morning. I see Alicia and our employment specialist. We've got all the specialists on the top row there. Uh, we've got uh, employment specialist Carly is on. Our housing specialist Rhonda is here. I see Gary this morning. Morning, Gary. I have a community services specialist. And let's see here. And our director of uh, clinical and intake services, Camelia. Good morning. And client services managers. I see Carol and Cindy this morning. Let's see here. And Dana, good morning, Dana, as well. And I see uh, from community services, I see our managers, uh, Jordan is on, and I see Odelia and our lead community services specialist, Jason, is on here uh, as well this morning. And let's see here, we've got uh, and Veronica from Woodland. Good morning, Veronica, too. So um, let me jump into our agenda here. Certainly, we'll have more folks joining. We've got, what, 44 on so far. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about our newsletter that came out. T forgot to talk about that last week. Um, we have uh, Catherine from Southside is going to do, uh, I think, a brief little discussion uh, related to the HCBS, right, Alicia? I think we're going to we're going to do that, and then uh, we're going to go over the trailer bill. So I've got, uh, a, a, I think, a pretty good summary of the trailer bill language that I will be able to provide. I can't share any good documents right now just because they haven't updated all of the web links yet and so i don't want to share a bunch of laws for folks with web links that aren't updated so um but we'll probably do that next week uh and talk a little bit about our discussions yesterday at the provider advisory committee we've got upcoming vendor forums we're going to discuss i think we still have another session of the scdd uh disaster forum that's coming up uh, discuss about rollover briefly and about new authorizations. Uh, we will go over some of the upcoming things on our Alta calendar. We'll take a look at DDS's calendar. We've got upcoming uh, EVV, electronic visit verification, and we've got upcoming um, uh, employment uh, work group uh, for the Department of Developmental Services. Uh, Helen's going to have an update on transportation and then if we have time we'll give a little update on um the housing applications that we put in this week as well so um anything else you're welcome to put it in the chat we do not have rima today so um, no uh, deaf culture 101 I'm, it's gonna be weird not having it I'm, I'm so used to it every week so but she's off this week and we'll we'll do it next week um so first thing i do want to let's see i want to jump into the newsletter and so i'm going to share my screen and before i do that i'm going to mute gary though there we go all right i got you gary and then let me go to the newsletter there we go um so again you know if you're familiar with our newsletter whoops uh alicia are you seeing the the alta's website shared perfect all right um, if you so if you're familiar with our newsletter, you know that we translate it into a number of different languages. Um, we have uh, received excellent uh, language accents and cultural competency grant funds from the Department of Developmental Services, and that allows us to get um, our newsletter out there to a very wide group of folks. The um, our executive director, so Lori Benalis, is the one that sets the kind of uh, the tone and what the topics are going to be for. Um, every time we do one of the newsletters, she lets us know, you know, what kind of things she wants featured. So for this one, I just I want to uh, give a shout out to uh, Michelle uh, Duchesne, who found uh, Lindsay Watkins's art. And um, uh, there are a lot of people that are friends with Lindsay. And so uh, now that she's featured on this, I've been hearing from people that are very happy to see that Lindsay is uh, featured on here as our as our featured artist. Um, Again, uh, what we are focusing on in this uh, edition is uh, our community inclusion and engagement uh, strategic plan focus area. And that focus area definition is that we provide information about eligibility services and supports to clients, families, and community partners. Uh, we seek out collaborative opportunities to learn and educate about the changing needs of the community. And um, I will, 
if Veronica's still on a little bit later, maybe she and I can talk a little bit about the town hall that we did this week um, in Woodland, speaking of speaking of outreach activities. Um, so again, that's our strategic plan area. We do have a feature here on um, our early start service coordinator, Kayla Olson, who is now a client services manager, Kayla Olson, as of uh, July 3rd. So a nice little feature on her in there. There is an upcoming meet and greet for our client advisory committee. Uh, some of you are familiar that regional centers have both a client advisory committee and they have a provider advisory committee. The, uh, and these are required uh, within the Lanterman Act for regional centers to have these committees to advise the, the board of directors. And so we take um, our relationship with our client advisory committee very seriously. We, I, I really enjoy attending the meetings every month and I've been doing so for many years. And um, when I was the manager overseeing the closures of the developmental centers, back then the client advisory committee uh, every year for a few years would come out to Sonoma Developmental Center and, and host meetings out there. And we had some service providers, um, Antonio Ranet in the past, um, we've had uh, Michelle Ramirez from On My Own, um, and some others that have come out and actually uh, participated in those client advisory committee meetings over at uh, the Sonoma Developmental Center. Well, now the, the you know, our clients have primarily moved out into the community. We're still looking at having meetings where we can do kind of an open house meet and greet type of activity. And now they want to do it back at the, the main office at Harvard. So uh, September 12th, you know, we want to encourage people that might want to attend the client advisory committee or meet some of the people that are part of that. Again, you know, these uh, individuals are representatives of the entire, you know, almost 30,000 clients um, and folks that are at intake that we serve. So we've got quite a few. Speaking of intake and clinical, we have a very nice feature here on our intake and clinical team. And so really appreciate the time that was taken to highlight the uh, work that is done there, as well as some really key staff that are there as well, um, including some of the leads that we have. I think we hey, have the regional center. Oh, sorry. Yes, go ahead. Do you mind if I just jump in here? I would quick? love it if you could. Yes, please. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Do you mind scrolling up just a little bit? I will. Yes. Tell me where. Um, right here. I, uh, sure. I just wanted to just take the opportunity to just highlight the team because um, as every team here, we work hard and we recognize that since the pandemic, we've had an unprecedented intake, um, an uptick of intakes. And so uh, we struggle and uh, we are constantly pivoting on the best way, re-strategizing to manage the numbers coming in. And so this uh, this was written with the intention to uh, be transparent about what's going on and what we're doing um, to address the issue here. We cite some stats there in 2020, we averaged 97 applicants coming per month. In 2023, we're averaging 197 applicants per month, representing a 100% increase. And so we, we have that, but not the, the matching staff, if you will, to, to go with that. Um, but we have had some opportunity to recently hire some psychological associates. So we now have three um, that are working directly under clinical supervision of our staff psychologist, the lead psychologist, who is lower in here. But um, we're, we're doing, sorry, John, thank you for pivoting with me and rolling with me. That's but right. um, Dr. Root is the lead psych, and um, she's working with the psychological associates and um, getting them, helping to support them being trained to work with our system. And it's to address all of the eligibility review process that we have to do, um, in addition to psychological testing that must take place for many of our applicants coming through. Um, and then if you just don't mind going right back up to the lead intake specialist, just want to highlight um, the two that are listed there, um, Hillary Santiago and Brand uh, Brandy Stewart. Excellent. Um, they are helping support the managers of intake um, and just uh, the team helping support their, their peers. And um, I think that's it. The only other person I want to mention is um, the medical doctors who are part of our team as well, the eligibility review team. That's Dr. Kate Milroy. We do have Dr. Barbara Friedman. So there are other people mentioned in here, but um, just didn't want to have pictures and whatnot, but just want to give a nod to the hard work people are doing. And we recognize that we're all being impacted by the increase, but we are doing all that we can to move people through. Thank you, John. Thank you very much, Camilla. Um, again, you know, I will, I will say having the consistency of having someone, for example, like Dr. Root, that's been around, you know, longer than I've been at the regional center and having that kind of solid and, and Dr. Philip have been here 
like 14, 14 years, years. 14 years. Oh my God. 14. So, I know. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> again, it's, it's having that consistency is really nice. And I remember when like the Mignani's left and we were like, what's, you know, what's going to happen next. And it's been so great to have. And, and I mean, I am surprised that we have not seen a 100% growth in our staff, Camilla, um, with the 100% <laughs> With right. a one hundred percent growth of the <laughs> workload, but um, unfortunately, we know that it doesn't quite work out that way, right. um, and we're all doing that. I know the best that we can to keep up with all of the new excitement that folks have to become regional center clients, and um, also in our community services department, all the excitement that people have to be new vendors. Um, we, we were just meeting with uh, with our accounting department about that, and we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. We did host a micro enterprise fair. Car Carly, can you tell us a little bit about what a micro enterprise fair is? course. So a micro enterprise fair is uh, an event that we put on to um, help support and promote our clients who own their own small businesses. Uh, we had, um, I think about 20 clients who attended and um, sold their crafts we, uh, or sold their or promoted their businesses. Um, a lot of arts and crafts. We had a, uh, someone who had a dog walking business. We had um, some film and media um, individuals. Uh, we had um, an author, uh, a very wide variety of individuals who owned their own small businesses. And um, we're very excited to take um, part of this um, event. So we are looking at continuing to do these about twice a year. Um, it was very well attended. Everyone had a great time. So it was, I definitely encourage you if you um, didn't get a chance to come to this one, keep an eye out for the next one and um, attend if you can. I, I know a number of you staff worked in, in getting this kind of off the ground and also during the day supporting in the room and then also coming out and I think I see Beverly doing some shopping there if I uh, look correctly. So um, again, I think uh, I, I, you know, these are great events to do. This is the beauty of coming back from COVID is having these types of things back in our building and the opportunity. We will look forward to holiday shopping. Um, because we need to buy more of those ornaments too that are hand painted that we can get because um, I'm getting a collection now. So, all right, that was awesome. I appreciate um, again the work that went into that. It's just it's a fun, lively event. Um, speaking of fun, lively events, uh, I think we've shared some pictures with this group before, but we also have a feature on the DSP Collaborative um, and the DSP DSP Collaborative uh, job fairs, and so we've done two of these job fairs now and you can see some great pictures of the different booths that were done and i do apologize i did get there a little early um but i did try to get a, a kind of a good cross section of a, lots of different types of service providers you know which is awesome right because that was the hope is that people don't just think of it like oh it's for a residential type of settings and so we had um you know, ABA vendors, applied behavioral analysis, we had respite, we had care homes, uh, CBEM was there, we had uh, the mobility vendor, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was pretty cool. And again, extremely well attended, um, you know, the location that we had was, was excellent. And again, this is just the very beginning of the job fair um, as it was going. So um, a, a great event, and we'll certainly look forward to doing more of that. We also have a feature here um, on our cultural diversity specialist. You guys got to meet uh, Shamir a few weeks ago. He gave an uh, introduction to his position, the things that he does at the regional center. And so I've gotten to get to know him a little bit more as we've done some of the events. And so we'll look forward to hearing more from him and updates um, in the newsletter. We're going to give him a section of the newsletter moving forward to really focus on all of the outreach events that have been going on uh, through his position. And so um, I will just say, and you know, with with having him uh, introduce himself to you guys, I think it was last month, but I just really appreciate his energy um, that he has, and he's got a lot of really great ideas. So, um, anyways, just uh, let's see, we've got a feature here on our Pride Parade uh, that we did as well, and so you can see a bunch of the Alta staff out there. I don't know, I think we showed maybe some of these pictures. Um, but uh, feature some of our folks from community services and case management and family members. And uh, I think my wife may, was able to hide from any of the pictures, so she wasn't able to get into any of these. But um, for those of us that were out there, like we had a we had a great time. Um, we almost lost Gary from screaming so loud for so long, but, um, but that was OK. We got him some water at the end and he was fine. But uh, yeah, we, we really enjoyed ourselves um, out there, certainly an event that 
um, you know, Lori really, as soon as we came back, she's like, oh, we are absolutely doing this again, you know, next year. So um, hopefully we'll have more staff that want to join us uh, next year or two. Um, even though there was a ton of us, it'd be great to have even more. Uh, Greg Carr, uh, gotta love Greg, um, uh, as an employee of our regional center as well. And uh, he is a, a feature about the chess and backgammon club that he is uh, put together. And so um, Greg is a, a really neat guy. Uh, recently, not I shouldn't say recently, what, six months ago, won our uh, our walking challenge at work as well by far outpacing what anyone else had done at our agency um, with the steps challenge. So um, again, a great guy and a nice feature that we have in here. I believe that uh, Herman Help worked on uh, as well. We have a job fair coming up um, and I don't think I have Jennifer on this morning, but um, Lynn Arner has been working really hard. That's our consultant for the ARPA funding that we have uh, the American Rescue Plan Act funding that we have and uh, we have an upcoming job fair again very similar to the uh, the disability industry career expos that we've done previously um, we really want to encourage folks to come to Alta and uh, try to get a job with one of our early start vendors uh, and with that I can give an update on also the early start meeting that we had last week, right, Helen? We we have not told the wider group what the results of the 637 are, so we can make sure we update them about that as well. Um, again, ACRC by the numbers, uh, one of these times, maybe at the end of this calendar year, I'll do a chart that really shows the growth of our agency. But um, I, you know, I like to say that when I started working at the regional center, which was not that long ago, like 13 years ago, we had about 16,000 clients and we're getting close to hitting 30,000 with intake before the end of this calendar year. So um, just huge, huge growth of our clients uh, base during that time frame. I guarantee you we do not have double the amount of service coordinators um, than we did at that time uh, either. We just will make that very clear. So um, it is certainly a challenge as we're looking at bringing the caseloads down as well and bringing on as many new staff as we can. You know, we have these great big, huge ACRCU which is our new employee orientation classes, but still, you know, it's it's a it's a big demand. Uh, Camelia and her folks are bringing people through, and so uh, with that, you know, hiring up as much as we can, and everything that we we're doing at the regional center is really just um, working towards more uh, sustainable growth for our uh, regional center and all of the service providers that have to work with this increased growth of clients. Um, new service providers, so we always like to, to um, highlight some new service providers that we have in here, so a new transportation company, always very nice, um, independent living services, new residential, new supported living services, new adult day health center up in, uh, uh, I think that's the one in Woodland, um, that we vendored, and uh, the UC Davis Redwood Seed Scholars Program was vendored, we had a great presentation yesterday at the Provider Advisory Committee about the UC Davis uh, Redwood Seed Scholars Program, and uh, Pacific West Pharmacy, and then a couple of speech therapists, which is awesome. And then we had a couple independent living skills providers that closed, and then SNC Care Home, which I don't know if anyone from residential is on, but I don't know that SNC Care Home had been serving anyone recently. I don't know. I don't remember if, if they were or not. SNC just decided that they would close. They um, worked with us through the surge, and then they made that decision to close. Oh, okay. Thank so you. They, they were done after the surge? Yep. Okay. We surged too much, possibly. One thing I will say is that um, we certainly are much above the... Uh, in the in the plus column when it comes to residential service providers i think we ended up with eight eight more this last fiscal year than we had previously even with ones that were closing so we know we're and we know we have a ton of applicants that we're, we're coming through right now that's why um michelle duchene has hired an additional position to process uh new residential vendorization requests that are coming through um, again, uh, a nice article here about uh, Lindsay who works up at the Creative Arts Center and how to order or how to get her artwork that she does there as well um, up in Yuba City. And uh, Michelle will be taking her show on the road to go find another artist for our next one too. So invite her to come out. We definitely want to spread it around a little bit when it comes to the uh, different um, companies that we are um, finding artists at. And then. We also did, uh, the, this is the press release, like the official press release that was written by Sierra College related to the Learning Independence for Future Employment Project, 
which is um, another, well, we have a lot of Carly projects in here, don't we? Um, got to take a look at the number of things we got assigned to her. Um, but this is the one, uh, the Sierra College thing, we has been uh, kind of a two-prong project. We have the transition to independent living program that we are looking at replicating that was at uh, Taft College. But then we also have the life project, which is really looking at a service model transformation and looking at that pipeline between the, you know, the high schools and the, you know, the colleges or what we used to call junior colleges or community colleges and seeing if we can really look at um, those warm handoffs and creating a set of standards um, that, you know, regional centers and the schools can really uh, look at adopting statewide and, and make some really good recommendations related to that. So that is the life project and we are um, plowing forward with that. And I think that all the recommendations are gonna be in by the end of next or this, this fiscal year, my goodness. So by June of 2024, is that right, Carly? I think so, yeah, so by June of 2024. So that is uh, what's going on in the newsletter. Again, those go out uh, quarterly. We recommend that if, uh, please sign up on our website on the front page and at the very bottom, you can, um, you can see that. I am going to share my screen real quickly about something. I don't think we have Hewitt on this morning, but I know he came on before and I do wanna just share what he shared with us, which is if you have not been watching the news, um, it's going to be very, very hot um, over the next few days. And so there's um, uh, information, there's a post on the on our website that you'll be able to see preparing for the high heat. Um, and again, recommending folks stay out of the heat if at all possible and uh, make sure clients, you know, are, are look at the activities that are gonna be done with them too uh, during this time frame. So. Certainly, you can click on our website and go to the posts there, and you can see the preparing for high heat uh, that Hewitt put out today, too. All right, and let's see, Catherine from West, or from Southside, uh, are you able to uh, do your announcement? Sure. Yeah, some of you were here, I think, a couple of weeks ago when I presented on the HCBS grant that Southside is doing. Um, our objective is to create a focus group of local leaders, HCBS recipients, parents, families, um, advocacy groups. There's gonna be alter representation there, basically to address the needs and barriers for HCBS compliance and person-centered practices. Um, what we've discovered is there are a lot of folks, um, vendors that are HCBS compliant on paper, but not necessarily on practice. And so we wanna to try to identify what those barriers are to people putting um, person-centered practices in place. Um, and we're gonna start by creating this focus group and just looking at it and then trying to come up with solutions for how to do this. We do have funding for group participation. So anybody that wants to participate, there it, your participation will be monetarily incentivized. Um, so I, I've, so far I've gotten some um, uh, uh, several folks that have signed up from the residential groups. Um, so I think I only have one or two people from day program um, and I still need representation from HCBS recipients. So if any of you have participants or clients that would be interested in being part of this group or know of family members that would be interested or people from advocacy groups, folks on self-determination, please have them reach out to me. I'll put my contact information in the chat. And I'm in the process of sending a flyer out that's going to be going out to Alicia, hopefully by the end of day today, that we can then send out to participants and families, because I really think it's important to have that representation in, the, in this group. Um, so any questions or any of, it, any of you want to join? <laughs> We're going to be starting our meetings in September and we'll meet quarterly. So we just email to find out what the uh, monetary compensation is? I think that's going to be the first order of business at oh. our first meeting in September. Perfect. It's a, you know, always a good thing to, to put out there. Yeah. 
All right. Well, thank you for putting that in the chat. And we really hope that you will reach out to be part of this uh, partnership. Again, we are you know, going to be pressing full steam ahead with uh, HCBS compliance this year with whatever the department will ask us to uh, do. We are not quite sure about that yet. I will tell you, um, and I shared with our um, uh, service providers yesterday at our provider advisory committee that we've invited the Department of Developmental Services to come to the Community Services Directors Group meeting in two weeks uh, to provide us an update on a few things. Um, and uh, some of those things are the workforce questions that folks have been raising about the uh, stipends for bilingual and for, tra for training for service providers. We asked uh, DDS to report to us about what the HCBS plans are for the upcoming year for um, HCBS compliance and some of those activities. We've asked them to, of course, go over you know some of the budget policy items that I'm going to talk with you a little bit about with some of the trailer bill things um, as well. Uh, but uh, and then the the service code um, transitions, the the move uh, in the rate study to aligning the service codes by the end of June. We've asked for some additional guidance related to that too. So we do have some presentations lined up by some executive folks over at DDS already, and so be looking forward to hopefully um by you know the second week of august or so um we will be able to get um uh, some updates back to you on some of those key areas that you know we've been waiting some time for to know some specifics about um and we have our first taker in the chat for being part of the focus group yes absolutely thank you very much yvonne that's awesome now let's now we just have to keep them rolling that was the first person. Now we need someone else to be a second and then a third, and then more people will sign up. But if it's just one person, we might not get anyone else to do it. We're gonna do this like a telethon, folks. I just need one more brave caller to call in and pledge to be a part of Catherine's focus group. All right, we'll see. We're gonna see if it happens. Maybe I'll assign it to someone, we'll see. You're gonna get paid. We're not quite sure how much. We'll figure that part out still. All right, um, so, Great. Um, oh, oh uh, a maybe gets it rolling a little bit more. I like that. Oh, yes. I, I think you might, Sheila. You might have to count as you might have to count uh, with you one. You might have to be your assistant. You guys can split the money in half, though. It'll make it easier to attend. All right. I love the activity in the chat box. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. If we, we, I, we really want to that we don't bring people on to talk to you about these things for no reason. We really do want to get all of the support of you service providers. Um, and it's very important when we're talking about HCBS. Some of you folks are very experienced, and there's a lot of providers that aren't. And so if there is guidance and support that you can provide to others, you know, these focus groups and things like that are a great way to be a part of that. So. You guys already do a lot. I recognize that already, but thank you very much uh, for this. All right. Um, I am interested in talking a little bit about the trailer bill, if you guys want to get into that. Um, I, as I, I kind of mentioned it yesterday at the Provider Advisory Committee, um, you know, the trailer bill has been signed, uh, but we do like the, all of the web links that we typically have to all the changes that go into the law that are triggered by the trailer bill. Um, are not up to date yet. I know because I try to click on some of them. And so my understanding is about a week from now or so when ARCA checks to make sure that all the links are updated, then that's when there's going to be a wide distribution of more detailed information of where you can get the um, uh, where you can get the the uh, specific code language. But in the meantime, um, I will I, I, I'm not so wide, widely familiar with the uh, the LEAP program, the Limited Examination and Appointment Program, um, other than it's a different type of an examination program that you can do to get onto state service. I think that's a pretty simple definition of it. Um, that has been, um, is now a permanent program. So that was something that I guess was maybe a pilot program, and now that is a permanent program um, at, through the trailer bill. Then there was a little bit of a language change um, related to the LEAP program as well. Um, additionally, in the trailer bill, bill, and I suppose, and I did this last time, I can give you the, this is the actual trailer bill itself. And I'm going to drop it in the chat. I think I did it last time too, but I'm going to put it in the chat. 
So if you want to like look at what all it says in the trailer bill, but this is the parts of the law that are impacted by the trailer bill. And that's kind of the summary that I'm giving you right now. The option for remote IFSPs, individualized family service plans meetings has been expen extended, extended, extended through June 30th. ABA or intensive behavioral intervention services for an infant or toddler cannot be contingent upon uh, parent participation though the benefits of participation can be highlighted. Uh, let's see, and that was a change to government code. Change to welfare and institution code uh, requires the Department of Developmental Services to give the legislature annual reports on their work related to special incidences. And I believe that is related to the uh, modifications that they're looking and making to the um, special incident reporting regulations. I can get some clarification on that too when it populates. Uh, provisional eligibility expanded from just three to four year olds to all children under age five. Uh, and if an infant is eligible for early start, provisional eligibility must be assessed. Purchase of service data reports to be uniform and include some aggregate info. Regional center clients to get their own POS data uh, yearly uh, with eventual uh, online access to that as well. Uh, rate models are going to be updated regularly to account for minimum wage beginning July 2nd of 2024, and uh, there is a fix to the 9010 issue that has been created. I think what we discussed at the Provider Advisory Committee meeting yesterday was possibly inviting Harry Bruel to come to a future Provider Advisory Committee meeting to update uh, our service providers on that issue. I still think that is where I want to have the because the 9010 issue is so impactful and because our service providers are really connected at a, a statewide level in a lot of the discussions um, that is still going to I think be the primary place where we discuss the 9010 issue and the impact of the full implementation of the rate study. If the quality incentive measures have not been completely uh, finished and so. Um, I know we talked a little bit about it yesterday. I am not absolutely familiar with what it is, so I'm going to kind of save that one for us to go over, I think, next month with um, Harry at uh, possibly, the, or not next month, I guess that would be um, September because we're dark in the month of August for the Provider Advisory Committee. So I don't know, maybe, we, maybe we'll do it sooner than that. We'll see. Uh, the option for um, IPP meetings has been extended uh, to do remote IPPs has been extended through June 30th of 2024. Medical services that are not available via health insurance within 60 days will be authorized for purchase funding by regional centers. Medical dental services shall be authorized uh, during delays. This is like really early on, folks. I know, you know, I shared about this, I think, last week, but, you know, we have the budget that just got signed. We have the trailer bill. We still have at least probably two months before the state of California releases the guidance to the regional centers on how we're going to operationalize all these different trailer bill areas. So there's not like, you know, the, there's not a lot of context to the regional centers about and, and direction about some of these specifics. And we're not going to get that for another couple months. Um, and then those will get posted uh, out in a letter that goes out to all the executive directors. And then we share that widely with all of you and then it gets posted on DDS's website and typically that's what we will use too when we do our trainings like with our managers because it really lays out here is how we are going to operationalize all these things, but in essence, because this is out there and available. Um, you're getting a little bit of a preview about what uh, are some of the things that we're going to be operationalizing, even though we still have not operationalized things from two fiscal years ago's budget, um, which is. Like, for example, those uh, the, what the acre training type of stipends, the, the bilingual stipends for uh, DSPs, et cetera. DDS, uh, okay, so additional, um, uh, <laughs> additional, we have DDS can make rules related to federal person centered planning rules. And um, another change, uh, through, this is a welfare and institutions code change, not a government code change about ABA or intensive behavioral intervention services for an individual cannot be contingent upon parent participation, though the benefits of participation can be highlighted, just like a little repeat there. <sighs> All right, for social recreation, camp and non-medical therapies, centers are forbidden 
from making people first use IHSS, exchange respite or other service hours, or have co-pays. DDS can issue directives for these services, including providing them as participant directed services. Um, I'm just gonna pause right there for right now. We know that the language existed previously to make social recreation a participant directed service. That was something that we saw previously in the May revision. With that, I do not believe that it has already been made into a participant directed service. I, I unless I, and someone can please chime in if they know something different from their reading of this or their understanding of it. Um, I believe that we do not have that already. I don't believe the flip is, the switch has already been flipped because there's still not a service code that exists to pay an FMS to do social recreation services, um, participant directed. The other participant directed services have their own service codes. And so my understanding is that, so we would have to get a directive that would allow us to do this. And I don't know what DDS's plan is. I will share that if we don't have that answer in the next couple of weeks, that will certainly be a question because as I mentioned last week, and as I heard loud and clear from our accounting manager during our meeting this morning, we continue to be really, really impacted as an agency with the volume of social recreation purchases that are coming in to the point where I will share now with you as service providers that all of the rollover authorizations should certainly be in, meaning if you had that authorization before the end of that fiscal year and it was just rolling over, it, those should all be done. But for those new authorizations that were supposed to begin July 1st, my understanding is that there are still several hundred that need to be processed by our accounting department. And so I did not know that until just now. Uh, I found out about it right, but that's why we always meet with accounting before we meet with you all as providers. So with that being said, that could mean that there are services that are being provided right now without some type of authorization. I want to encourage each of you as service providers, we recognize this is the beginning of a new fiscal year, but we also have said that it is imperant, that, uh, imperative that you have the uh, authorization for services in advance of providing those services. So in these situations, if there is not an active authorization yet for one of these clients and you're transporting them, I would encourage you to get in touch with that service coordinator. And I would say, and I don't know how many that, you know, that what this impact is going to look like, but you might want to CC their manager as well. Just getting it out there correspondence wise, um, because this might lead to some type of challenge for a client if you were to immediately stop services right now at this moment. And so, um, you know, I, we do have our two directors of client services on here this morning, Jennifer and Michelle. Um, but I, again, I, I just learned of this, that our, our accounting department has got, it sounds like several hundred that they have not yet processed that were supposed to be effective January 1. I, I would assume all of those authorizations were put in place in the timely manner, you know, in advance of July 1. Um, but my understanding is just with that volume and primarily the social recreation um, purchases that they're processing right now, they're not able to get to the new authorizations. So outside of contacting the service coordinator and maybe CCing their manager on the message, if, if a vendor recognizes that, is there anything else that we might suggest for a service provider? No, John, I think um, we can start there okay. and move forward. What I will say is that when I was a case management supervisor, if ever these situations came up, like I spoke to that vendor, like the vendor knew that like the author, like what was going on with that authorization. And it was, it was very clear. And also talking to that vendor to make sure that that authorization was in before the end of the month when they went to go do their billing. So, you know, before that, that August, you know, time rolls around and you're pulling all of your authorizations, verifying that you've got authorizations for all your clients so that we don't end up having to do uh you have an, you miss an opportunity to be able to do your your um july billing so i i don't have anything else necessarily more about that i just i wanted to make sure that you as service providers were aware of what you know we just learned was that there that uh, we've got this delay right now with our accounting department and processing new authorizations yeah andrea sorry 
Uh, actually, I actually had a question about the trailer bill language. Yeah. Sorry. Um, just, and I can probably read this or look into it, but uh, as far as the uh, language to adjust related to minimum wage, was that just related to local minimum wage or is it state minimum wage as well based on the um, uh, rate? I feel like I hope it's local, right? Because then that would make it really much more effective than... Yeah. Well, I just wonder if it was local, if it wouldn't affect state then in a like... Let me, uh, I'll, I'll look at, I'll, I'll see if I can get an answer on that. I, I hope it's local too for those folks also, but then I wonder if it wouldn't adjust as far as our minimum wage have gone up, you know, twice. Yeah. Well, wise. That, so just a clarification. Uh, local or state minimum wage uh, increases, yep. Or both, thank you. Or both, yeah, <laughs> or both, okay. Thank you. Um, all right, so that was my little aside as I was talking about social recreation. Just wanted to make sure that we were shared with folks kind of what impact we're dealing with right now. I will say at least on our uh, in our department, we are looking at even adding some more new people to uh, do vendor processing um, and also to deal with the uh, ongoing biennial uh, evaluations that we have to do for our service providers as well. Again, as as the number of service providers grows and grows, um, you know, to do all of these activities requires um, a lot of bodies. So uh, let's see, additionally, the uh, family home agency rates are now tied to existing residential facility rate models. Kind of talked about that one previously. Uh, family cost participation program remains on hold through June 30th of 2024 annual program uh, family program fee remains on hold through June of 2024 when they come back online a DDS can implement recommendations to reform those fees there was a lot of questions why they didn't just get rid of it right away but I don't know if they didn't have all of the financial scoring on it possibly I'm not sure um and let's see uh state council on developmental disability has uh, an employment uh, committee and there is now going to be an Office of Employment First that is going to be at Health and Human Services Agency at the agency level. Uh, let's see. There was um, some employment language changes. I had to get into the specifics of that one. Um, I already talked about the Office of Employment First. Desert Star portion of Canyon Springs Developmental Center is going to eventually stop. Um, after they build a few more safety net homes down in that area, and then they modified some um, uh, court commitment rules for Canyon Springs Developmental Center. And then finally, um, Jason's baby, the uh, family uh, coordinated family supports services program, I got another uh, $10.8 million to do the pilot project um, through the end of this fiscal year. So. Um, hopefully we'll get some vendors here rolling pretty shortly with that and we can provide some data on how that's uh, working in our local area. So that is what is going on with trailer bill. I will look and find out some more information on the minimum wage and then we'll do also do a further discussion about the 9010 issue um, as well. And we have um, just real quickly on our website, uh, if you could, you know, when you go over there, we did mention previously that we are having um, upcoming upcoming disaster preparedness uh, uh, webinars with our dear friends from the State Council on Developmental Disabilities. And so if you go to our website and you go to our events and calendar, you can see a few upcoming things that are going on. So we have a storytelling, storytelling with disability lead. We have a backpack giveaway that's happening. July 26th, uh, we have this, uh, again, the Disaster Preparedness Community Forum. The first one was yesterday evening, and the next one is on July 19th at noon to 1.30. And we've also got uh, upcoming training next week on uh, SSI and CalFresh. So um, always recommend people check out our um, calendar here upcoming events. I know we've got a vendor forum, supported living vendor forum is coming up here very shortly on July 24th. We've got, uh, as we said, that early start job fair. We've got the deaf and hard of hearing uh, vendor forum that's coming up on August 9th. Adult and day programs uh, as well, August 24th. So lots of, uh, lots of exciting uh, stuff going on here at the regional center in the upcoming days. 
we had a vendor forum for transportation and uh, Helen, can you just give folks a quick update about what happened with that vendor forum? Yes, uh, thank you, John. Yes, we had a, a very productive vendor uh, discussion with our um, transportation vendors. And um, we plan to do a follow-up uh, vendor forum with the transportation vendors. However, uh, we have not set an exact date yet because um, the discussion with the broker, transportation broker, the R&D, is ongoing right now, and we may call in, uh, call our transportation vendors earlier than the planned uh, vendor forum in September. So uh, we would like everyone to just kind of stay put and uh, look forward to the invitation when we have it. Excellent. Thank you very much, Helen, for that. So um, again, keeping up with the growth of our agency, we're looking at moving over to a transportation uh, broker and, uh, you know, we'll be sharing more with you as service providers as we get the information prepared for our service coordinators and managers first. So we've got to get that taken care of and then we'll get into uh, with all of the providers giving you an update on uh, what the plan is with the broker. All right. Um, additionally, I just wanted to share, um, I'm going to go over to DDS's calendar. And again, I like to, uh, you know, navigate there so you guys know how to get there. So if you go to DDS's front page in the bottom right hand corner, you can see their upcoming events calendar. And um, in that the regional center performance measures work group is coming up. So you can look at participating in that if you like. Uh, the interagency coordinating council has their meetings uh, as well. We've got the employment work group coming up on Monday the 24th and then more uh, electronic visit verification meetings occurring as well. Um, just as it relates to the employment work group meeting, my understanding is they're still looking at trying to outline what the uh, DDS, I think it's $8 million employment grant is going to look like, or excuse me, employment pilot project. Um, but we don't know necessarily any specifics about what that is going to look like at this time. We did have an opportunity to um, uh let's see we had an opportunity this week i'm gonna stop sharing my screen to submit uh, some uh proposals to the state of california for um the super notice of funding availability for um the housing and community development department and what this does is this allows us and i'm just gonna i'll put the the link in the chat to um, what this is, but what uh, this allows our provider or, or housing developers to do is if they are interested in setting aside uh, units of housing for people with developmental disabilities, they can um, make an application to the uh, state of California for some specialized funding through the housing and community development department. And this is different than some of the other projects that we've talked about. Like we've talked about the Mirasol Village project. We've talked about the um, Cornerstone Village project, the two projects that are out in Woodland. Those projects are funded through D the Department of Developmental Services funding. Um, and in some cases, we are also applying to housing and community development, which is the super NOFA information that I put in there. And so um, Rhonda in, I guess what, her second week at Alta got the, the, uh, the crash course in all of the housing developers all wanting their um, proposals uh, all in by this Wednesday. And I was also on vacation for a week. So that was really fun. So we got four projects in, including uh, the se a senior housing project, so senior housing for people with developmental disabilities in Roseville at 300 Taylor Street, and that's the project that uh, we had uh, we had submitted last year and were not successful, and so we're trying again uh, this year. We submitted uh, again for the Cornerstone Village project, so with uh, John Stewart Company, so that we could do uh, multi for the multifamily housing down in Elk Grove for some more financing there. Again, these projects are all about layering the financing to be able to make it affordable and available to our clients. So uh, lots of work that went into it, but we got uh, four housing applications in and last year we did two and this year we did four. So maybe next year we'll do uh, eight now that we have uh, Rhonda on and more people are learning that our regional center is interested in doing these types of uh, developments for our clients. 
With that being said, I would like to share the great news that Alta California Regional Center has been award was awarded this week our fourth multifamily housing development. So Alta California Regional Center was awarded the Lake of the Pines project in beautiful uh, Nevada County, located right between Auburn and um, Grass Valley, right on Highway 49 right there. So that is uh, multifamily housing units for 12 units there um, in uh, Lake of the Pines. And that is with the Chelsea Housing Corporation. These were uh, funds that the state of California asked to be reappropriated from 2020 to this year. And we just got a call on Monday, right before our board meeting, that um, we were approved for our fourth project in four fiscal years. So that is pretty awesome to have four multifamily housing projects going. And of course, we've got the one in Mirasol Village where our clients have already started moving in. So we're very excited about this. We're really looking forward to doing more and more of these projects. Um, additionally, Alta California Regional Center is uh, working and entering into a contract with Cal AHA, which is the California Affordable Housing Association. The California Affordable Housing so Association is, in essence, the kind of the trade group or the it's the uh, the ARCA, the Association of Regional Center Agencies for the housing authorities. And so what we got into contract or what we're getting into contract with Cal AHA, and I dropped the, the link in the chat there, is to provide technical assistance and support to the regional centers throughout the state of California to do more multifamily housing projects. And so um, the state of California, DDS, reached out to Alta and said, hey, you know, we would really like all the regional centers to be able to do these multifamily housing projects. Um, there's certainly certainly a lot of statewide interest in more regional centers being connected to their housing authorities, and so we are very excited. I uh, had a great meeting with Cal AHA yesterday afternoon, and we're going to be punching out some contract language, and uh, they're going to be meeting with the other regional centers beginning at the beginning of August at our housing specialist, our statewide housing specialist meeting. So again, this is uh, us taking on a contract, and Rhonda's going to help kind of manage it and this will be a statewide resource for all the regional centers with the goal that all the regional centers by the end of the two-year contract will be able to submit a proposal like the Mirasol Village proposal and be able to get it you know not necessarily that it's going to be approved by DDS but that a proposal that can get approved will be put forth by a regional center right now there's still seven regional centers that have not uh, tried to get a uh, project going yet or don't have one in that's been awarded by the state of California yet. So um, we're working on uh, increasing everyone's competencies because everyone feels that housing is so very important. All right. Um, let's see here. Uh, we did mention that we would just give an update briefly about the um, 637 request that occurred for um, the early start therapies. And we mentioned during Coffee with Community Services last week that we were going to be having a meeting with all of those early start providers at 1230 to go over what the DDS uh, findings were you know, for that. And so we did have it approved, as we mentioned. And so with that, um, in essence, what they are doing for the um, approval is they are allowing Alta because of our need for these early start therapies and the weights that are um, in place for um, OT and PT and speech for um, our clients that we are um, allowed to give the full rate increase amount, basically, the full rate increase amount that's going to come June of 2024 for those vendors is $141 an hour. And DDS gave us the authorization to give vendors $140 an hour right now, rather than have providers have to wait through the end of the uh, fiscal year to be able to get that final rate increase. And so um, I know uh, Jennifer and, has been in contact with vendors about this, and we've already heard, we heard positives during the meeting last week that folks are going to be able to provide more um, opportunities for services for our clients. And um, so really looking forward to those opportunities. We're going to be also uh, examining the infant development programs as well um, to look at transitioning some of those programs to align with some of the rate study rates and allowing some of the individual services that are in, within the infant development programs to be able to get some of those 
broken apart higher rates um, that the, the department is allowing us to do. So um, again, I thought uh, it was uh, well received by our service providers last week during the meeting. I know, uh, you know, Jennifer has worked really hard on doing this. Uh, you know, Adriana from uh, Helen staff as well as it was working on this significantly too. There's been a lot of meetings that have occurred relating to this. And so really hope that this impacts our capacity to support our, uh, our clients and their families. So let's see, uh, Michelle or Jordan or Helen, is there anything I missed? I don't think so, John. Cool. No, so I don't have anything. So we'll get out today by like 1130, like I said, right? Perfect. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you all very much. I will have the like written version of the trailer bill stuff, hopefully be able to give it out like in the next week or so. As soon as we get like all the web links updated, then the document uh, will come out um, from ARCA and then we'll, we'll pass it along to folks at that point and, and share it more widely. Hope everyone has a cool weekend um, and uh, you know stay out of the heat and enjoy yourselves and we'll look forward to talking to folks next week so have a great one take care thanks bye